Confidence builds with practice. It's a chicken and egg thing because everybody wants the confidence to make the calls, but you've got to make the calls to build the confidence. You've got to start somewhere, and everybody has that same fear when you make the calls. So go through it. I mean, the guys at the top, they've went through it, so why shouldn't you have to go through it? Cause I did it my way, nothing y'all can say And this life for the next What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to conquer your fear of cold calls. Cold calling is something that makes you super successful but nobody wants to do it. And I don't care where you get your leads from, if it's for sale by owners, expireds, online leads, door knocking, whatever it is, you have to call the people back. Maybe it's warm calls, maybe it's cold calls. People are just scared to get on the phone, period. And today we're going to conquer that fear. And as always, if you haven't already, click subscribe and hit the bell because I'm teaching you everything I know about selling real estate right here on YouTube. So whenever I encounter an agent who's asking me how to get over the fear of making calls, the first thing I want to know is, is what are they scared of exactly? And then I want to reverse engineer them out of that fear. So at the end of this video, if it doesn't help you get over the fear of cold calls, I want you to comment below exactly what your fear of cold calls are so that I can diagnose and remedy the situation for you. Now here are a couple things that I find that most agents are scared about. They're scared that people are going to get mad at them. They're scared people are going to hang up on them. They're scared they're going to sound like a telemarketer. They're scared nobody's going to like them. They're just plain scared. They get that knot in their stomach before they make calls and they just can't quite get their finger to dial the numbers on the phone. The first thing I want you to know is that this is incredibly natural. Everybody has a fear of making calls, especially the first time they do it. Every single person, top producer or not, you are scared when you start out making cold calls. I still get a little scared here in there even though I've made 100,000 calls in my career. So just know that the fear you're experiencing is 100% natural and that you're supposed to feel this way. Now getting from being scared of making cold calls to being a master at making cold calls is a set of stages. As I explained to an agent in a coaching call I had recently, check it out. See, 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 here's the thing, man. You want it to be perfect before you make the calls, but you have to make, you have to make the calls before you, you're going to get it. Like you, you're not going to make the calls and you just be an expert. The first call you make, you're going to mess up a bunch at first and you're going to learn from that. And like it's stages first, you're going to be scared to make the calls. Then you got to make yourself make the calls. Then you get over that. You're like, okay, I can do this. I made the calls and they, and I didn't die. Now, now, now you're like, okay, now I'm making the calls. Now I got to start feeling comfortable, you know, now, you know, once you get to the comfortable part, now it's like, okay, let me refine what I'm saying. Okay. Now I'm kind of saying it right. Let me start trying to actually read the person I'm talking to so that I can, you know, go with the flow of each conversation and, and try to get the most out of it to, to figure out exactly how I can help this person. You know, it's, right. st it's stages. You're in a very early stage. So here's the difference in top producers and low producers. There's stages to all this stuff and low producers get stuck in stages and they don't, they don't move to the next one. You know, yeah. and so you have to say to yourself, am I just going to be stuck right here where I'm scared or am I just going to bust through that scared stage and go to the next stage and the next stage and the next stage? Because I had to go through it. Sure. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know why anybody else thinks that they don't have to go through it. Yeah, 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 it sucks. It sucks to, uh, yeah, it sucks to make calls. I mean, yeah, everybody knows that. But, you know, so does mopping floors for a living or roofing houses or, you know, doing hard labor. I mean, think about the alternative, man, and be grateful for it and say, I'm going to make these calls because I'm going to be number one in my area. So going through the stages of cold calling is very natural. You're scared, then you do it, then you find out you're not, then you're like, this isn't as bad as it seems, then you make more calls, then you want to know what to say, you get past that, now we want to know how to say it, now we want to learn how to read people on the phone, now we want to start spotting opportunities, there's always another stage to go to. 
So always be getting better, always be working on your skills. Another thing that I've realized that I think will take a lot of pressure off your shoulders is the fact that you're not gonna talk anyone into buying or selling a piece of property today. They've already made the decision in their mind. They already know when they're gonna make those moves and sell that property or buy that property, okay? So it's not up to you to talk them into it. It's your job to make them feel comfortable and be an information provider. Here's a clip where I was explaining that to the agents at Remax of Orange Beach. Right, if you focus on this long-term business, but then people want to buy and sell, you're not gonna talk anybody into buying or sell. They've already decided when they're gonna buy or sell. They, are, they already know. It's our job just to make them feel comfortable so that whenever that was, that decision is to be made, whether it be today or next year, or next five years, that we're the one they come to. So when you realize that you're not there to try to talk someone into doing something or force them into anything, that takes a lot of the pressure off because you know you don't have to be high pressure. You're just there to make them feel comfortable with you and be an information provider and be there for them when they make the decision that they want to buy or sell. And in the short term, you're gonna run into so many people that want to buy or sell today as well as build your business for the future. Another part of cold call reluctance is you assuming what the result is gonna be, right? You have this planted in your head how the call is gonna go when it hasn't even happened yet and you don't even have the experience to know what the actual numbers are. Right? When you make your calls, most people are going to like you and want to do business with you. They're just not ready yet. That's the numbers. So here's a part of that same coaching call from earlier where I was explaining this to an agent. Okay, so, so as far as reluctance goes, reluctance comes from you thinking negative thoughts before you make the calls and talking yourself out of making the calls, right? Correct. What you're worried about are you're assuming how things are going to go and you don't you have no idea how they're going to go. You're assuming how they're going to go, right? Right. And what happens is is we as humans, we we the what we with the things we worry about happening uh, about 90% of the things we worry about happening never happen. Like you, you're worried about an imaginary result that hasn't even happened and you're worried about it and you're expecting the, the worst possible results in your mind. Right. You need to be thinking, these people are gonna love to hear from me. They want to hear from me. They're gonna love this information. They're gonna, they're gonna like me a whole lot. Those are the thoughts you need to be having. Another fear I hear a lot is that agents don't wanna sound like a telemarketer. They don't wanna feel like they're portraying themselves as a telemarketer to prospects that they're calling. So this kinda of comes from not having the right phone scripts and philosophies in place when you're making your calls. I'm just trying to get to the root of why you're scared to make calls. You know, you know, you know. That's what separates what we do and what everybody else does. You know, if you follow my phone script the way that it's laid out for you, yes, sir. you don't sound like a telemarketer. Do you understand? Yeah, do, have you watched the videos of me making calls on ZeroToDiamond.com? Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, the, the, on the private. Yeah, absolutely. Did yeah. that? Did that sound like a telemarketer? No, not at all. Okay, so why why can't you just follow exactly what I do? I can. You can watch the video of me making cold calls and also get a copy of my phone scripts in the description below. Here's a clip I did from a speech for Remax last year where I explained confidence and the fact that if you know phone calls are going to make you successful and you don't make them, that is a selfish act. Confidence builds with practice. It's a chicken and egg thing because Everybody wants the confidence to make the calls, but you gotta make the calls to build the confidence. You gotta start somewhere and everybody has that same fear when you make the calls. So, go through it. I mean, the guys at the top, they've went through it, so why shouldn't you have to go through it? What makes you special that you don't have to conquer your fears or do stuff you don't wanna do? And to me, if you know that what I'm telling you is going to make you successful and you still don't do it, you make excuses and you don't do it, this probably sounds harsh, but it's because you're selfish. Because when you know something's going to help you succeed and you don't do it because you don't want to feel a little uncomfortable, 
That means you're telling everyone around you, your friends, family, coworkers, that you don't really care about them enough to feel a little uncomfortable. Because if you succeed, they succeed. Everybody wants you to succeed. Your family needs to pay the bills. Your coworkers want to see you succeed. Your family want you know everybody. You can help people. You can help your mom buy groceries. All kinds of things. You need to understand that feeling uncomfortable is part of success, and you're not special. You have to do it. Okay. So just to reiterate on that last clip, if you don't make phone calls after finding out that you know phone calls will make you successful, that is selfish because if you're successful, you help everyone around you. Don't you wanna help everyone around you? I know this sounds a little harsh, but I feel like it's my responsibility to tell you exactly how I feel about this to give you the best chance to succeed. That's my job. I would want the same thing from you if the roles were reversed. And if you're worried about what voicemail you're gonna leave, here's a clip from the Q&A of that same speech speech where an agent asked me about what kind of voicemail I leave. Okay, I have a question. When they're not answering, I mean, when they have a voicemail, what message do you leave? I just say it's Ricky Crew 3 Max Orange Beach. Give me a call back when you get a chance. And what percentage of people usually call you back? None. <laughs> so how many times do you reach out? Once. And then if they don't call you back, you just say next? Bye. Okay. Guys, at some point, it has to be about quantity. It can't always be about trying to drive home this one client. Okay? It's, it can, you can do that and, 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 have, and give great service and stuff. But at some point, you have to say, everything's not going to be perfect. And I need quantity to get to the mountain, to, to, the, to the top of the mountain. So if you heard in that clip, I only call people once. And the reason for that is because it's so unlimited. There are more property owners in your area than you will ever call in three of your lifetimes. So let's take advantage of the fact that we have an unlimited source of prospects to call and create relationships with. Another method I like to get over the fear of making cold calls or anything that scares me that I know I need to do or that I know is going to make me successful is the 3 2 one method. The 3 2 one method is, is when you know something is going to scare you and that it's going to make you successful and that you have to do it, you say to yourself, 3 2 one and you just do it. So in honor of the 3 2 one method, I created the hashtag 3 2 one club on Instagram. Go to my Instagram, turn the post notifications on, like and comment under each of my posts, hashtag 3 2 one club and win a chance to talk to me over the phone five or 10 minutes and pick my brain on anything you want. And like I said earlier, if you still have some kind of fear of cold calls after watching this video, please comment below and let me know what that fear is because I want to dismantle it. I want to take that fear and show you that it's actually an opportunity and you need to be committing and going all in on that fear. The bottom line is, is I want to help you. I really hope this video motivated you and helped you get over that fear of cold calls. Click subscribe and hit the bell and we'll talk to you soon. All you need to do now is practice. You know what to say. You got the phone numbers. You got the time. You want this. You're motivated. You want to dominate. You want to be number one. The only thing between you and all the those things is just making these calls.